Good morning everybody. Um, <clears throat> this is kind of like a, a goodbye for a while. I'm going away at the end of the week. I'm going to Sweden for a few days. Um, and then when I come back, work will continue on the house. So I don't know. It, my life is so chaotic at the moment. I can't say when I'll be back, when I won't be back. But I just thought you'd probably seen this before. Now I've done a few videos for YouTube about my artist books. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but sometimes I get a little bit uh, I don't know, like, down about my work, where am I going with this particular piece, what am I doing this for, and it's harder, when I haven't got a class, I find it harder to, f not focus, but have a purpose, my classes keep me going, basically, and I haven't been able to do a proper one for a while, because of various reasons, so in those situations, I always go to my Flickr photo stream, if you're on Flickr, and you're a bit like, oh, what am I going to do, what am I going to do? I would advise going to your Flickr photo stream and just scrolling through it, uh, scroll through it, become inspired, because that's what happened to me. I do it all the time, but yesterday I did it, and I came across images of this particular book, and although I've, you've probably seen it before on here, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm sure I've shown it in a, a video on artist books. If you scroll back through my videos, you'll find videos on artist books. And I came across some pictures of this and I was inspired. So I thought, why not run you through this little book and then maybe add some titivations. Let me just, uh oh, no, maybe not. Um, I just want you to have a good visual, that's all. So these are small little books that I buy from a person called Lily Moon. She doesn't make the books anymore, um, sadly. Um, but then I work in them. There's a bit of doodling in the first couple of pages, but then I decide, no, I want to do artist books. So stitched papers that are stitched separately, then stitched to the page, okay. Um, so all these pieces were created and then added to the pages. And sometimes I stitch directly into the pages, but I'm not sure I've done that with this one. So it's vintage, that's vintage, I didn't embroider that. Vintage buttons, more stitched papers at the edge, little pillow, some applique onto paper, then put into here, um, continues. I like doing this with ribbon. Uh, I like putting little ribbon ties on that mimic as if something's tied up there, which it isn't. Um, I drew on this paper first, hexagons, you know how much I love a hexagon, and grandmother's flower garden. This is fabric, this isn't paper. Well, that's paper, it's paper with lace overlaid. Um, more paper with a little fabric pocket that's got pins in it. So if you do that, it lifts up and in there there's a little pocket. I can stitch that down actually. Um, a, like a soft, squishy, dangly thing that I made myself. Um, more ribbon, that's tying that on, the soft squishy thing. Ribbon stitched down, embroidery into the paper. More ribbon stitched down. This is a quite a big fabric piece attached to the paper at the top. More paper, more hexagons. That's supposed to lie like that. So you've got a half grandmother's flower garden. There's a theme going on here, can you tell? Um, this is tied, so that's one page that's tied down onto another page. There's nothing underneath, it's just a means of securing that over there. Silk ribbon this as well, by the way, I love silk ribbon. Um, it's not massively expensive, I don't think. There, so that's back tied again. Another soft, squishy thing. This is vintage fabric, I didn't do that. Um, more grandmother's flower garden. What I'm going to do when I've made this video are more ties. So we're tied in three places here. Um, I'm going to put another one of these spreads together with paper and hexagons, with those hexagons I've got that you've seen on my blog, hopefully. And more. These are thread cards with ribbon wrapped on them. There. So, and you'll see there's a lot of pages there that are still working. So perhaps that's what I'll do. I'll do another piece of this and add it to this book. But in the meantime, I quite like a dangly thing. I like dangly things. So what I thought I would do 
is add some dangly things to one of these pages and I don't know which one really so I've got dangly things here like little pom poms um, perhaps this edge so these are really big sequins white sequins I bought these in London um, and I haven't got many of them left so I can't remember what shop I got them from so what I do with these kind of things, I don't sew them on as such, I tie them on. I'm not going to go through the whole shebang here, I'm not going to go through what's on the back, although it wouldn't matter if I did because you wouldn't notice. So what I'm holding here is the actual page from the book, can you see it? And the paper overlay I've got on top. And I'll make a hole there so that it's visible from the back. Okay. And then I'll come up through that hole. Yeah, put my sequin on. And I'll leave a bit of thread. I won't put it flush to the paper because I want it to dangle. And I'll go back down and I'll just tie it on the back. Now I'm going to have to be careful that I don't pull the tie too tight. Because don't forget, I want a bit of a dangle going on here. It's going to be quite difficult actually because it's uh, under there. Right, I'm going to have to do a kind of blind because I can't do that and tie at the same time. So, but being careful not to pull it tight. If I get some kind of knot going on in here, that sequin will dangle. Says she. Right, so let me see. Yeah, there. Okay, and that is tied now in a knot on the back. A double knot. So I'll put that off. Now the next one, I might be doing myself a favour if I tie it on the front right now. And not the back. So that's that one. So that will dangle. Okay. Now I've got another one. I've also got some of these buttons that I made. I might put one of these on next. Okay, little ball buttons that are hand stitch. I'll put one of these on next, so I'll tie this on from the front and then when I come off camera I'll add some more of it, both of these I'm not wrong, I don't, sorry, I need to go through the loop and then go down okay and then come up just next to there And then again tie it but try and leave a bit of dangle going on there now i'm not happy with that because i'm not happy with how you can see oh that doesn't matter actually yeah it's all right to be fair cut that off two dangles on there okay now you might think well when the book's closed you don't see them but when the book's closed you don't see any of this doesn't matter. The joy for me and the beauty for me is seeing it when you go back into the book. So I'm going to put another sequin on here and then I'm actually going to do it from the back because I like the visual better from the back. These are going to get in your way so don't say I didn't, don't say I didn't warn you. It's going to be fiddly, fiddle fiddle. And again it will be quite difficult because I've got to try and tie from the back but hold the page up at the same time so it's not easy um, but it's very very worth it again don't pull it too tight so I'll do your first knot and then pull it second knot. There's really no magic trick here apart from patience and if you get it wrong and it's too tight you can just clip it off, snip it off and start again can't you? There's nothing to stop you doing that. Right there, so that's got a dangle as well so I quite like that and that's, that's good. That's actually pulled up again. So there, there's the knot, the knots at the back, I can see it. So I'll snip that off, okay. Oh. 
So there, we've got three dangles, one handmade button and two really nice white sequins. Okay, so, so that's it. So I'm off on my travels. Um, when I come back, more disarray. Um, hopefully, give me a couple of weeks and hopefully um, I'll have sorted my life out. Fingers crossed.